relation between electric field and potential difference. You know what is meant by potential difference? What is potential difference? The work done in moving a unit positive charge from one point to another point against the electric force that we call it as potential difference. So, here I have a point charge plus Q. This will be the, let this be the direction of the electric field. In the direction of the electric field, I have two points A, B. Now, here from A to B, I am going to move a unit positive charge from A to B of distance separated by a distance D. So, the work done in moving this positive charge from A to B against this positive charge. So, here positive positive charge will have force of repulsion. The work done in moving a unit positive charge from A to B will be stored as potential difference. Let D V be the potential difference. Yeah. So, D V is equal to work done. You know the what is in the work potential difference? Work done per unit positive charge. So, here it is. Let this be D F. Clear? What is here E? It is nothing but the electric field intensity here up to this dx is the distance between the two points A and B. So, this much distance I am going to move this point charge Q against this positive charge that is against the force of repulsion because two like charges are there. So, this negative sign indicates this work is done against this force of repulsion. Now, what is here E? Electric field intensity. From this I can write E equal to minus dv by dx. Here, e equal to minus dv by dx. That is, difference in potential with respect to the distance. Change in potential with respect to the distance. That we call it as the potential gradient. So, in this way, I also I can define this electric field intensity. How I can define this electric field intensity here? That is nothing but negative potential gradient. dv is nothing but your change in potential that is the potential difference with respect to the distance. So, I can define this electric field intensity as negative potential gradient. So, this negative sign indicates the work is done against the force of repulsion. Clear? Now, can I write the unit for this electric field intensity based on this formula? You know the, what is the unit for potential? It is volt. For distance it is meter. So, I can write the unit for electric field intensity as volt per meter. Already we have seen another formula for electric field intensity E. E is nothing but in the beginning of the lesson itself we have seen this formula. How I can define electric field or electric field intensity? Electric field intensity is a measure of this electric field. It is given by force acting on a unit passive charge. In this way also, I can define this electric field intensity. So, what is the unit for this? Now, for force it is Newton, for charge it is Coulomb. So, we have two formulas. One is E equal to F by Q. The other one is E equal to minus dV by dx. So, the unit for this electric field intensity is either it may be volt per meter or Newton per Coulomb. These two are very important. So, we have two units for electric field intensity. One based on force one based on the potential. So, this is the relation between the potential difference and the electric field intensity. Now, we have seen what is meant by potential difference and what is meant by electric potential and what is meant by electrostatic potential energy. Now, I have a point charge and I have plus Q. I have a point charge. This is a positive charge. So, what will be the direction of the electric lines of forces originating from a point charge? It will be point charge outward. If it is a negative charge, the electric lines of forces will be pointing towards. Since it is a unit passive charge, the electric lines of forces will be radiating outward. So, like this, this will be the direction of the electric lines of force for a unit passive charge. Here, from this point charge, I am going to take a point on this line here 
here which are all at equal distance from the sponge cap. See all these points are at equal distance from the sponge cap plus C. Now just you join all these points which are at a equal distance from the sponge cap. Now the or the sphere if I take the potential at all these points anywhere on the sphere the potential at all the points which are at equal distance from the point charge will be the same. Let V A be the potential at this point. So, here if I find out the potential at this point, it will be V A. If I found here, it will also be V A. So, on all these points, only at this pair, this potential will be the same. Now, you take some more distance. Here, again I will take some more point. It is at a distance of x, uh, x plus dx. Here also I will take. So initially this distance is x. This is also x. Now I will take some more distance. Let that be x plus dx. This is x plus dx. Here again you just make some points and join all the points. Now they at this point, at this point sphere. All the points on this sphere will be at the same potential. Thus we call it as on this surface we call it as the equipotential surface. Let this potential on this sphere be VB. So here what is VB? Potential at this sphere which is at a distance of x plus dx from the point charge plus q. What is VA? Potential at this sphere which is at a distance of x from the point charge. Now, I can't say this potential on the first sphere will be equal to the potential at the second sphere. Both, are, both the potentials will not be the same because they are at a different distance from the point charge. So, this surface we call it as the equipotential surface. So, how I can define equipotential surface? The potential if the points are, if the potential at all the points on a surface are same, that surface we call it as the equipotential surface. Now I have taken an example for a point charge. So for a point charge, either the charge may be point charge or I can also have a spherical charge, either it is a point charge or a spherical charge, the equipotential surfaces. will be in the shape of or I can also say this equipotential surface will be a family of concentric sphere. Concentric sphere. So, this will be the shape of the equipotential surfaces for a point charge or for a spherical charge. So, this will you will be getting in one mark. So, how will be the shape of the equipotential surfaces for a point charge or a spherical charge? They will be concentric. So, this surface I can define it as a equipotential surface. Now, I want to move a positive charge on an equipotential surface. Please remember I, what I am going to do, I am going to move a positive charge, a unique positive charge from one point to another point. Let A and B be the two points. So, this is the equipotential surface to this sphere. That means at this sphere, at all the points, the potential will be the same. That type of surface we call it as the equipotential surface. Now, what I am going to do on this equipotential surface, I am going to move a unit positive charge from one point to another point. So, you want to find out what is the work done in moving a unit positive charge from the point A to B. The work done will be stored in the form of potential energy. From A to B, I am going to move the point charge. So, it will be equal to VB minus V A by the positive charge. So, here what is V B minus V A? How it will be? So, let this potential be V B now. Do not go for this example now. I have only one equipotential surface. Here at this point B, the potential B, let it be V B. At this point A, let the potential be V A. Now, what I am going to do? I am going to move a unit positive charge from point A to point B. So, let the potential at point A be VA. Let the potential at point B be 
Vp. How will be these two potentials and the equipotential surface? Will they be equal or not? We already know that on a equipotential surface at all the points the potential will be the same. So this is a equipotential surface at the so I can say this Va will be equal to Vp. So what happens to Vb minus Va? It will become 0. Isn't it? So what is this? 0. So the work done in moving a unit positive from A to B will be equal to 0. That is the work done is 0 when I want to when I move a point from when I move a charge from one point to another point on a equipotential. Only if it is a equipotential surface, the work done in moving a charge from one point to another point will be equal to zero. That means, Purida, so equipotential surface, one charge on the one point and another point move on, work done is zero. Why? Because the potential is same at all the points. Since the potential is same at all the points, there is no work done. Now, I have a uniform electric field. Can you see? If it is a uniform electric field, how will be the shape of this equipotential surface? So here also, at any point I can draw this equipotential. For a uniform electric field of intensity E, the equipotential surfaces will be in the form of a plane surface. It will be in the form of a plane surface. So this will be the shape of your equipotential surface. What that means? At all the points on this surface, the potential will be the same. So what will be the shape of this equipotential surface for a uniform electric field? It will be in the form of a plane surface. Here also I can take and if I draw like this, I will be getting another a plane surface. So, so many parallel plane surfaces I will be getting. So these are nothing but equipotential surfaces for a uniform electric field. But for a point charge or for a spherical charge, the shape of the equipotential surface will be concentric spheres. So, we know that what is meant by electric lines of force? Electric lines of force. Using this electric lines of force, what you are going to measure? You are going to measure the electric field intensity, isn't it? So, here, if the electric lines of force are crowded, that is they are closer to each other, that means electric field intensity is high. If the electric lines of force are far away from each other, that means the electric field intensity is less. If they are closer to each other, the intensity will be more. If they are far away from each other, far apart, the electric field intensity will be less. Now you take a particular area. So this particular area I am taking in both the examples. So let it be 1 square centimeter, here also 1 square centimeter. Now in this particular area, can you see how many lines of force are crossing this particular area? In both examples. See here, I have so many lines crossing. Let there be uh, 10 number of 10 electric lines of force are crossing in this particular given area. Same way for here, there is one electric lines of force crossing. What that mean? Here the electric field intensity will be more when compared to the electric field intensity this example. So the number of lines crossing a particular area or a given area we call it as the electric flux. Now what is meant by electric flux? Electric flux is nothing but the number of lines of forces or electric lines of forces crossing a given area that we call it as the electric flux. I can also say this electric flux, flux is a measure of this electric field intensity, isn't it naturally? So electric flux it is used to measure the electric field intensity. How to write this or how to measure this electric flux? The symbol for electric flux is phi. We will find just see now how this electric flux is measured. So what is how I can define this electric flux? What is meant by electric flux? Electric flux is nothing but number of lines of force crossing a given area. It is given by the dot product of the electric field intensity and the given area. Let this be a closed surface. 
So here I have a closed surface S. Yes. Let this be the center of the closed surface. It is in this very small area. And within this enclosed area, um, let, let me see how many number of lines of forces are crossing. Let this be the direction of the electric field. I kept it in a non-uniform electric field, not a uniform electric field. Here I have a closed surface. It is in a non-uniform electric field. We just take a very small area. Let that small area be D. Now, I draw a normal to this. Let it make an angle theta with the field direction. So, you draw a normal to the surface area. Let it make an angle theta with the electric field direction. Now, for this small area, I can find out the electric field, electric flux, that is, it is a D sign. Electric flux is always measured as a dot product of the electric field into the given area. So, how I can measure the electric flux? It is nothing but the dot product of electric field intensity into its area. So, for the small area ds, let the electric flux be d phi. So, I can write this d phi as E dot ds. So, this is the electric flux enclosed in the small surface ds. Now, I want to find out what is the total electric flux enclosed in the closed surface. What I can do to find out the total flux enclosed within the surface XS, I can integrate this D phi. What that means? If I put a circle on this integration, that is integration taken over the closed surface. That is the meaning of the integration. Just a circle like this. So we know that what is D phi? It is nothing but E dot ds. If we want to write this, we can also write this as dot means it is a cos product. So, E ds cos theta. D phi equal to E ds cos theta. So, phi equal to E ds cos theta. So, this is the way how I can write this electric flux. E ds cos theta. we have seen what is the electric flux and how to measure this electric flux it is given by the dot product of this electric field intensity and the surface area ds. So, electric flux is equal to phi into E d s cos theta. So, the closed integral integration is taken over the closed surface. Then we are going to see what is the relation between the electric flux and the net charge enclosed by the closed surface X. So, these two quantities are related by a person gas and he gave a law relating these two. So, that law we call it as the gas law. 